Now, here comes the music. Good evening. It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Hey, hey, everyone. It's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable here with everyone here that uh, is have fun tonight. And uh, unfortunately, we were missing uh, DJ Fire, Nathan. I, I was hoping that he was going to be in here tonight. I don't know if he's got stuff going on. Uh, especially, you know, being today we're recording it and we're live on Valentine's Day. So uh, I know Matt's got a uh, a date to go on. And uh, I know that, uh, I, I, I don't know if Nathan's doing something with his girlfriend, but uh, hopefully, you know, he's having fun and maybe you can tune in and maybe uh, talk a little bit of chat. But again, I want to thank everyone for coming in tonight and thank everyone for being here tonight and having fun with us. As always, DJ Cool Thing, all from South Carolina. <laughs> we got DJ Braylon, all the way from Texas. We got Brett Lee from good old Wisconsin. Of course, lacrosse. And we have DJ Salsis, all the way from SoCal. And, you know, it's great we have different guys from different regions and different areas of the country. And I know, I know, cool thing. This is this is a subject you probably don't know much about. Hopefully, uh, if you ever decide to do a wedding show, hopefully it helps you out a little bit. And I wanted to start off tonight with wedding shows. <clears throat> I know I, I briefly touched on it last week, uh, very quickly. And this is the wedding show, show season is technically ends today. Today, between Thanksgiving and today, is the is the big um no problem is the big uh engagement season and with big engagement season is when everyone comes in and wants to get married and gets engaged and this is the high tide season where everybody has uh those dates and we're starting to see customers trick run trickle in for weddings and this is also a high wedding show season because they people are getting newly engaged they're like, hey, what do we do? Hey, let's go to a wedding show. Um, and we can go to the website and see if there's people there we want to see and kind of get an idea and immerse themselves into that realm. Uh, I have a wedding show. Actually, I talked to uh, the facility owner today, real nice young lady up in um, uh, up in uh, Northern uh, Lake County in, um, I gotta think now, uh, Antioch, I think for a second there. <laughs> uh, this is our first time they're doing it, very reasonably priced. It's a hundred dollars for a table. I'm like, yeah, we'll we'll do it. We'll try it. Hundred dollars for a table, very economical. Um, but yet this week and coming up, I'm doing a big wedding show, uh, two day wedding show in the city of Chicago, right by O'Hare, uh, and it's seven hundred for two days, which is again a good price. And then I have another one. Uh, next weekend uh, in Arlington Heights, Illinois, which is for the wedding show itself is $800. And that right there is uh, some of the pricing that's out there. Now there's more expensive wedding shows. Some of the wedding shows, a um, couple of the big ones that do multiple wedding shows a year, uh, they're 900 to 1100. And then there's a big one that comes in once a year and they have it at Rosemont at the convention center. And they charge, I want to say it's like 14, 13 or fourteen hundred dollars. I'm doing off the top of my head. Uh, and it's a two day show. So you got to break it down per day. Uh, Tracy and I have done that one. Uh, the first year was really great. The second year was, it, it was like a, someone flipped a light switch and it was not good. So my question to you guys, uh, and I know Matt, he had a phone call, he had a customer call, so he will be back in a little bit. But I question you, question you guys. When you look at wedding shows, do you go back to the same wedding show you do over and over again? and Or do you try and look for new wedding shows to join? And I know different areas, different markets had different amount of wedding shows. I know, uh, Brettley, you're in a small market, just like Cool Thing. Uh, Braylon, you're in a little bit bigger market. You're like a medium-sized market. And, you know, myself being in Chicago, it's a big market. So what do you guys usually do with wedding shows? Do you guys go to the same one over and over again? Or do you guys try to look for new ones? Who wants to go first? I can. Okay. So with Ever After and the company we run, we 
are going and do all of them. And there's a couple that we don't like. Now, I wouldn't say don't like, but the last couple of times we've been in one of them, we found it was more last minute couples that waited way too long. And now they're looking for not only a DJ to fill something three months away, but they're looking for that $500 DJ. And that's one specific show that we caught that a lot at. Now, with every new one popping up, I'm trying to get in my foot into everyone that comes around, mainly because it is a smaller market. And for example, there's a small town of six, 7,000 maybe, uh, Toma, which is right next to another small town called Sparta, which is on the right off the military base here. Uh, so with that one, I would, I'll go over to that, to that wedding show for sure, just because, yeah, they might be from that area, but they're going to shoot into lacrosse for their wedding, just because they have better options so far as venues, catering the whole nine yards. And there's a couple of them that are the industry standard over here. Um, and one we've been at, again, every year for the past few years, which has wreaked a lot of reward for us. So, and with pricing on them, the one like I did a couple of weeks ago is a very intimate 15, 20 vendors total, but they have a fashion show, like a, a runway show with uh, dresses from one of the bridal companies up here. And with that, part of the reason I'm more than willing to do it is uh, I've been ho I've been the MC for it for a couple of years. So I'm more than willing to be the MC just to put my company's, you know, every my company's name and myself out in the forefront for everybody, just to get to take that presence, so to speak. With the other ones as they're opening up for us, because one of the companies who's kind of dominated one of the wedding shows for the past 25 years in this market is going out of business at the end of the season. And we want to take over hosting that one too, just so our name and our presence is that much bigger at these shows. And pricing for the shows, when you said that you're paying between like like under 900 a show, I my jaw dropped because I think the cheapest show up here is $1,000. It's one day and it's four hours. Then, and that's if you get the small, like 10 foot by four foot booth or 10 foot by six feet. We spent, I want to say, like almost $1,800 on booth and power for a 20 foot booth, just so we can put our photo booth in it, have a couple of, you know, options of, you know, like show a couple of my facades, show the Toadmatic and show the options we have that none of the other companies in the area do. So spending that money definitely, and this goes to Mitch Taylor's uh, uh, call, like how he coached my partner Brent into doing it all. We're showing that we have the higher end kind of setups and all of that. Why not have that bigger presence and actually make it appear that you are all of that instead of that, trying to cram it into a four foot space, take the whole thing over. And so that was one of the cut things we talked about going into the show. And it's definitely paid rewards with the last show we did. We definitely paid or made our money back in signs and the ones come like, one of the venues I'm at all the time, celebrations, they, do, they don't have expos, it's just a tasting. And it's only their VIP preferred vendors who are at these things. So they're literally handing us all these leads on a silver platter. And which part and parcel why I'm there as much as I could possibly be there. But those are the shows in our market. You have you know the smaller town shows that might have 20 or 30 vendors. And then the two really big ones in lacrosse one in January, one in March. So they're also not competing back to back and have a little distance between them. And they do that show in March just to make sure they cover the tail end of the Valentine's Day proposals. So how so many, how many shows, how well. shows uh, in a year do you have in your market? About a dozen. Okay, 12. A dozen notable ones, and I think we're in eight of them. If nothing else to keep our, as we've grown our brand name, to keep our brand name bigger in front of people it's always in front of your, your face now you're going to see it at every wedding show if you don't book us now and you look at our reviews when you go back home compared to everybody else we're hoping that's some of the turning stuff to help us get bookings and like i think it's working granted most of the reviews are me or the, my partner but our other djs are finally getting more reviews into that fold so we can go here okay. check this dj out here's what we've done cool and then, uh, Braylon, what about you? How do you, how, how many, how many wedding shows in your area usually a year? Do you know? 
So, I mean, there's a bunch, there's a lot. Um, but honestly, I haven't taken advantage of those yet. I actually haven't stepped into the full on like wedding show space. I've done venue open houses, um, you know, for <laughs> specific venues that have invited like a small handful of vendors to come in to kind of be like a more personal kind of thing. But I have not taken advantage of any wedding shows. Um, my reason being is as I scale my company, I'm I was gradually kind of growing kind of slowly. I've really been picking up this past uh, these past two years. And um, just the amount that I'm able to take on right now is a good number for me, but I'm wanting to scale and make things bigger. So of course, whenever I am at a point where I'm comfortable, I'm then going to start trying to take adva advantage of the wedding shows because I know there's great opportunity there uh, to just have a whole influx of people to be able to, you know, have leads with, get contact information from and things like that. So I'm looking forward to doing wedding shows in the future. I just haven't done any yet. Okay, cool. And then uh, DJ Sol says, we're talking about wedding shows. And I was explaining to him a couple I have coming up. I have one coming up this weekend, one coming up next weekend, one in March. Um, and when you do wedding shows, do you do the same wedding show over and over again? Or do you look for new wedding shows? The one in March is a new one, new brand new venue. Uh, they started basically in 2021. Uh, they just started doing uh, weddings, so it's a brand new uh, brewery, bar, uh, restaurant. They have an up upstairs area, holds 180 people, so a decent sized room. And this is their first wedding show they're doing, and it's 100 bucks for a table. And I'm like, okay, that's that's reasonable, you know, especially for a first show. You know, that that right there, even to get like two or three brides to come in there, you know, if I get one. The return on investment is huge on that. But when you go look at wedding shows, do you do the same ones over and over again, or do you go for new so, ones? So we have, there's one company that does the two biggest ones in Orange County. They do one in March and September. Uh, it's the one that does them countrywide, ACS, the ACS Bridal Expo. Um, they, I, I'm sad that I can't do the one this March. Um, so I'm going to do the one in September, but they, I mean, they spend tens of thousands of dollars in marketing to get the thousand plus brides and couples there. And there's hundreds of vendors and it's a massive, you know, convention or uh, I think they do it at the fairgrounds. Yeah, fairgrounds. So they're the biggest. Uh, they only do two shows in Orange County. Um, I think they do, I, they do two sets of shows. So there's like Orange County, San Bernardino, Ontario, which is like LA area. And then I think they do one in Burbank too, or somewhere in like Northern LA. I only do the Orange County one because theirs are really expensive. It's like 1550 for a 10 by 10, um, which is crazy. Uh, the other company is family owned. Their shows are smaller. There's usually between like 40 and 60 vendors, uh, still a decent chunk, but definitely smaller. They have, they're like, they're famous for their like fashion show. They have an MC that does it and they do prizes and giveaways and all that stuff. So um, there's, we find some success with theirs too, but theirs, um, I, I'm close friends with the owner because I, I DJ an event for her. And so it's like, for us, we got a deal for three shows in a 10 by 20 for 1200 bucks total. Uh, so like 400 bucks each booth and we got, yeah, we got the 10 by 20, like, like Bradley was saying, we like to have our photo booth in one, um, with, uh, my girlfriend or whoever running it and, and, uh, explaining to people that, and then I'm over on the DJ side and we have my lighting guy doing the lighting, uh, so that they can kind of see everything. And I'm the one doing most of the talking, but they're, they're beneficial. I mean, the one we did in Long Beach two weeks ago, we got three bookings out of, so, I mean, total of like. 10 or 11 grand from that. Well, actually probably closer to 11 or 12, but uh, you know, off of a $400 investment plus your time. And we have some swag that we give away and, and other stuff like that, but uh, they're worth it, but they're so it's a lot of work. I mean, you see on Instagram, some of the setups we bring to these wedding shows, we show up there at seven show starts at 11. Uh, I mean, it takes us a good two and a half hours to set everything up. Um, so, I mean, you're up at the crack of dawn and it's just, it's a lot of work. You're on your feet all day, talking to people, saying the same thing. Then you got to tear down. Usually load in is not that easy. Uh, the big ACS one load in is the breeze because it's at a fairgrounds. Um, one level you roll right in. But so, yeah, I mean, they're, they're a lot of work. I'm not sad about missing the ACS one. We have another show we're doing in March um, up in Burbank, LA area, just because I have a gig literally 10 minutes away the night before. So make a, a trip out of it. But I don't know. I mean, I'm at, I'm at 59 weddings this year. So, um, booked. So I 
think we're pretty comfortable for where we're at. Uh, but I always like, I always want to fill my calendar even more than possible, more than I possibly can. So I like the wedding shows. Yeah. And you know, it's the, a strategy the, though. The big thing also when you're doing, <laughs> look at your calendar for this year or next year or year after that is you always want to, hello, uh, <laughs> is always you want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, business, but also you want to, again, these wedding shows, it's not just people for 2023, it's people for 2024, and even a little bit for 2025, because you have friends with brides, I mean, the bride maybe get married this year, but that friend is like, you know, they have a boyfriend, and they, maybe they get engaged, let's say, in June or July or August, because, you know, they see, you know, everything your friend's going through, and they kind of pressure the boyfriend, or the boyfriend's like, hey, you know what, I, I want, I, I, I want to marry this person, and they pressure them, and they, you know, like boom, all of a sudden they're getting married. They're looking at 2024 or 2025. So it, it's it's one of the things that I you know, you want to market yes to that customer, that bride or that groom that's there in front of you. But also I try to market to everyone there and talk to everyone because also if they remember you, they become your advocate for you. So they go back and talk to the bride, the groom, whoever's there in front of you who's getting married that you're talking about their wedding. They're like, yeah, hey, this this per this guy right here knows what he's talking about. This guy knows what he's doing, versus some of these guys have no clue whatsoever. And the the, the ACS one, that's the one in Rosemont uh, here. And again, I, I can't, I couldn't remember how it was, but I, I, Tracy and I did a few years ago, and it was like thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars for two days. And yeah, it was great because the Rosemont Convention Center, we just pulled our van into. Uh, yeah. into the convention center, <laughs> dropped her stuff, rolled the cart probably 20, 30 feet, and we were right there. That was for our first show. The second show, we had to go a bunch of different areas. And again, look for the first show was really great, but the second show left the bad taste in our mouth. And we keep getting, you know, asked by them to come back for their show. And it, it, it's, I, I, I don't know. I, Tracy, and I always um, kind of go back and forth on it and go, do we want to go back and try this? Because it's not cheap. Like you said, it's your time. It's your money. If you're bringing employees in, you got to compensate them. At least pay for parking or pay for food. Or, you know, you, you got to compensate them one way or another. <clears throat> if you got to pay them per hour, again, that's all money you got put out. And that's stuff you got to look at is your return on investment for a wedding show. And I always believe that all the money that we, uh, you know, put out for these shows it you have to see what you get back for it. if you're not getting anything back you know like i did a wedding show uh i did two wedding shows it was a, a friday saturday in uh january uh the one wedding show uh in naperville in naper Summit, great wedding show talked to a good amount of people we haven't gotten anything from that yet then the wedding show we did the following night up in McHenry county at McHenry county college which was also a, a garage sale we got now we have two weddings off of it. Wedding we booked last night and a wedding we booked basically kind of that day uh with a couple. And that was very inexpensive. That show was I want to say $150 or two hundred dollars. And the other show was I, I want to say three fifty or four hundred dollars. The nice thing with the Naperville show is that they actually fed you lunch from a nice nice restaurant. Tracy went over to where they had lunch and she's like she was in love with what they had. I can't remember what exactly the dish was, but she was in love with it. And she has the information for the restaurant. So I, I know we're going to go there sometime. <laughs> so it gives the opportunity for that. But we haven't got anything for that. And that's the thing is that we, we talk about what we do next year. If the opportunity comes back, do we do that show again? Because we were cr cram uh, crammed in there kind of like um, sardines. It was really, really tight. We didn't have 10 by 10. We had basically the width of the table and then we had i had where i was sitting i was sitting in a chair and trace was in a chair next to me it was two chairs we're sitting in a chair and like the person behind me their back was touching my back and the person behind tracy their back was touching tracy's back and like the edge of their table was touching our one edge of the table so we had one little spot and i'm no small guy so i had to lift the cable up pull the table out walk out put the table back you know kind of thing it was a couple times to move it out and I actually moved it out further out so we had a little more room behind us 
because <clears throat> I don't want to, you know, encroach on top of other people. So I was always trying to watch. And, you know, Trace is here. She's like, you know, I'm, I'm like a bull in a china shop sometimes. <laughs> she always says that. Um, but the thing is that um, it's just one of the things that, we, we you know, there's not a lot of room there. So that's the other part I look at is what they give. And, like, we don't do photo booths, so I don't need an extra 10 feet of space. Uh, we don't have 30 DJs working for us. So, again, I don't need a 20-foot space. But a 10-foot space is usually pretty good because you may get an extra foot or so on each side, depending on how they're set up. And you can kind of arrange the booth the way you want to. And we go over for this week and how we're going to arrange the booth. We go on Friday for setup. And I'm going to do a different setup than we've done in the past. But it's just one of the things that when I look at this stuff and I go through this stuff, it's 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 like anything else. How much money you want to spend and what you want to do. And if you are doing this, again, the return on investment is huge. You know, how much time you put into it, set everything up. I know, uh, Matt, you are working on video for your your screen. You do yeah. the same stuff I do. I don't put, bring any audio equipment in. When I do a wedding show, there's no audio equipment. This is all visual because I don't want to interfere with the other people there, the other vendors, the guests come in. I don't have to yell over my own music. And then I've seen it before in wedding shows that I run into. Um, oh, God. Uh, okay. Um, I've seen it before in wedding shows when they have DJ battles between each other. And I don't want to run into that. Oh, God. Okay. So this is why I said, oh, my God, for it. DJ Fire. Uh, grandma is in the hospital. Uh, not so good uh, tonight. She fell and broke her leg and isn't doing well. Well, uh, Matt, Matt and... Braylon and uh, Brentley and, and and Hunter, um, all of us here right now, um, I, I know and they'll all say the same thing. We wish your grandmother a speedy recovery. Hope she does better. And if there's anything you need from us, man, we're here for you, brother. Um, you need to talk to someone. You need to you need anything. Um, reach out to us. We're here for you. And I, I wish uh, grandma well, a speedy I'll recovery. You, uh, yeah, I'll be praying for you, DJ Fire. I'll say a little prayer for grandma Thank too. You. So. If, Again, everyone here, say you know, say something you know, whatever you want to do. But uh, hopefully, uh, grandma gonna... gets better very quickly. And you know, broken leg, especially you know, she's a little older. You know that you know she got go if she's got to go to the hospital, spend a couple of days in. Hey, God bless. And um, again, hopefully, gets home very quickly and is running around caught in trouble again like she normally does. Because I know my grandma; she was always causing trouble. <laughs> Both my grandmas. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta jump out of here in a second, but I was gonna say one thing about the wedding show. So the smaller one that we do, what's nice about theirs is they don't have any uh, little half pipe and drape things. It's just like straight pipe and drape down an aisle, and you kind of have like a guesstimate of where your ten feet is. So like, we could push out really as far into the aisle as we want, and kind of bump the edges of the side of the booth as much as we want to. So it's, I, I, it's I not like as, that. yeah, ACS, it's like, those. I hate those little half ones because you make, it makes it so much smaller. And like, we can already have like, we, what we usually do for the ACS is we take their little half thing and we just put the photo booth backdrop right in front of it so that like, that's what they see. Um, and then that way we're kind of using that as our wall. So, um, but I, I like the, the, the smaller show what was nice was each section was 20 feet long. So there were a maximum of two vendors per section. And then we we had the whole, basically that whole section of the aisle just for us. So we had the whole space to work with. And it's just, it makes it such a world of difference. Yeah, I've I run into that with a little half bar, half a little wall. Yeah. And you feel it, I, I've gone up to them sometimes and I'm moving stuff around and I bumped yeah. into it. I'm like, whoa, okay, yeah, you gotta watch yeah. it. I know how that goes. Yeah. Well, enjoy right. yourself, Matt, Thank have you. fun. And have Thank a good you. night. And then um, DJ Fire said she's 85. They may have to have surgery. Well, again, like like as before, I hope that. Uh... Wait, did we lose someone? Oh, Matt, Matt's leaving, right? Yeah. But, but yeah, Matt's leaving. Okay. I'm like, the, the screen just changed on me. So it just yeah. confused me for a second. Uh, I hope that uh, she I feels thought, better. I, again. The half crash. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> All right. I'll catch you guys later. See you later, Matt. Have fun. Have fun. Matt, you is know, one having, thing I... Matt is having dinner on the uh, top of a restaurant in uh, downtown LA, and I wish him, uh, you know, a speedy time there and enjoy a beautiful dinner. And again, like before, um, 
What's up, guys? Nice hearing you. Thank you so much. And uh, great having you here as well. And again, I hope DJ Fire, again, I hope your whole grandma, uh, again, she has a little surgery. Hopefully everything works out fine. Uh, keep me informed and I will make sure everyone knows what's going on uh, with this. And uh, we will make sure that uh, we all are, are there to support you and grandma and uh, your family. Um, it's one of the things that uh, with with wedding shows, you never know what you're going to get. And I know that we try to prepare for wedding shows as much as possible. But we also want to prepare for other things. And the next subject I'm going to touch on is we're having a poor, poor uh, hunter here, DJ Cool thing. He accidentally deleted some files uh, for his music. And I know, I know how he is, how particular he is on his music. I know how much music he has. Tons of music. And if you ever watched his, uh, his so much why he streams stuff, how he does things. And if you ever go to a, a you have what a Mixcloud or, um, well, SoundCloud. I have Mixcloud, but I mostly stream on Twitch. Well, yeah, you do you do Twitch, but you also done uh you you also do it SoundCloud. So he has a very good good sized library, and somehow or another he he evaporated that library uh, by clicking on the wrong things, and he had to recover his library. Um, so, uh, Hunter, yeah, tell us your fun time recovering the, these uh, songs and what you had to use. I know you, you've been battling this for a while and watching on YouTube. Yeah. Well. And eventually, like, it was right after a live stream and some DJ wanted to give me some uh, music to help me out with my 30th anniversary party that I'm DJing in March. And I got Dropbox and it hooked up to my hard drive. And at first, the uh, library was, like, missed path or... We couldn't, they, uh, the apps couldn't find the files. And what I did was I accidentally dragged and dropped the folders that were unsynced in Dropbox to my hard drive and it wiped everything. So I'm using the Tenorshare 4D DIG file recovery and I got some of it back, but some of it's not really working, but some of the files are working. Okay. So you're, you're, you're recovery. And that, that's, yeah, I'm that's a good thing getting a recovery on that. And, you know, I know that it's a pain in the red yeah. trying yeah. to recover files and stuff like that and losing music, especially as much money. And again, you, if you are a DJ out there, which I know a lot of you guys are watching the show, uh, you can, you can feel his pain uh, of losing that music because uh, through uh, DJ pools. Uh, a lot of times, they would keep music for a short over, time, over like four or five years. That's like four or five years worth of music plus my childhood CD collection. That's like hundreds and hundreds of CDs I've collected over the last twenty years. And you know, you look at someone who's a veteran like myself or Brentley. Um, if we had to lose our music, that would be absolutely horrible. And uh, Bradley, I don't know about you, but you you back up your music on the separate hard drives because I have four separate hard drives of music on. I've up, got four laptops, and for every one of my DJ laptops, or which one I can use, it's not. What's on your What's on her chin? She get hurt? It's a cleaning thing. Oh, uh, for those blackheads. Oh, one of those poory things. Okay. Uh, yeah. But so for every one of my computers, I have my master library, and then I will have my record box playlists all on a separate backup hard drive. And this actually came in real handy once when I was at a, and the good thing about, you know, as long as I have the, the playlist saved, I can take that hard drive and shove it into any computer and go. And it happened at a wedding I was DJing at in 2017, where there was an older person on an oxygen tank and kind of dropped the tank on themselves, the rolly tank thingy on themselves and wound up falling backwards into me and my booth while I was plugging my computer and my driving. Ouch. So I had to, like, I had it all on the other drive. I just had to get it, you know, 
literally tell my computer now, don't read anything from the old drive, delete everything, because that drive won't work again, and take everything off this drive. It was almost flawless, except for my videos, which I had to go and do all the videos manually. I don't know if, of any DJ app that lets you turn playlists with videos and MP3s together that will transfer over, unless you're using CDJs. But I literally spend at least one day a month going through all of my backups, make sure everything's good to go. And then because I have maps, I have a time machine backup, which actually saved me a big headache when I bought my new computer a couple weeks ago. I just back, I'm, now granted I have one computer slaved to the same hard drive now for my uh, for record box, but literally just plugged in the most recent backup and it populated my new computer. So that saved me a couple of days work of dragging. Yeah, that's, the, that's the thing. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I don't use Time Machine because I use this for my meet for my master library, and I use this for my uh, mixing pro down here. Gotcha. I will. I wish I knew about you know using a Time Machine backup to fully restore everything into Record Box because when I had an issue a couple of years ago on the spot, I could have just done that because I keep that you know Time Machine with me to that computer. So whenever I'm at a gig, I've got six hard drives, unfortunately, but I'd rather not risk somebody's day. And worst case, I've, I put everything musically on my iPad, just so if anything goes wrong, I have some way to get it going. Yeah. That, yeah one, of, one of the things like I do, and um, I have hooked up, I, I, I have multiple, are, you know, these little hard drives, you know, you can get them on Amazon, uh, one terabyte, you know, hard drives. Used to be like you know five hundred gigabytes was huge, and but I have other, you know, I have, uh, you know, I have other ones here that are older, and they have like this is a five hundred gigabyte one here, one terabyte, and this one's hooked up right now to the computer until it gets filled, but I have, you know, here's a Toshiba. This is a. Uh, Oh, so I actually have a Toshiba. <laughs> this is actually a Toshiba right here from 2015. There you go. This is another 500 gigabytes from Toshiba. You know, again, this is mm -hmm. one terabyte. Um, I have another four terabyte. It's a my main uh, for my laptops, so I can go between laptops. But then, then I have the uh, hard drive that's here on the computer to you know have everything and the, the hard drive that's actually i just plugged i just plugged it back in um it is all music videos from uh from promo only and i copy the vi music videos over from promo only onto the hard drive so it's all the new stuff and it's from 2001 2002 now i do have to get another one terabyte hard drive and uh, I, i'll i'll keep you know loading on that when I get pulled, so I pull in three areas uh, on my blue hard drive, which is my four terabyte, this hard drive, which is a eight terabyte, and then I'll, I'll just load up another one terabyte hard drive. Once I fill up the one terabyte hard drive, unplug it, put it onto the side, and that way I always have backups of of, of everything as much as possible. A um, couple things out in here in the chat. DJ Fire, I have some new videos coming out soon with some big news for DJ Fire. Cool. And some Ooh. more shed stuff and lots of other cool stuff um, behind. Yeah, I know life gets in the way sometimes. And one of the uh, chatters, I have my music on three hard drives. Again, that's a professional. Uh, DJ Braylon, on you, how do you prepare for those oops and mistakes? And uh, how do you try and protect as much music as you possibly humanly can? So, I mean, similar to y'all, of course, um, external hard drives is just kind of like a, I'll, I'll consider it a standard. Um, I don't like to DJ off of external hard drives. Um, I know everybody has their, their preferences. I have to, the computer I'm, we're, we're, the computer I'm on right now is a 121 gigabyte SSD. Mm -hmm. So I got to have all my music on here. Sure. Um, <laughs> and I know, I know they make computers now that have just like insane processing power and things like that. But I'm just not a big fan of doing on, on external hard drives, except for backup. Uh, backups, I will use that for uh, for that. Um, other than that, you also have your backups, such as like like Bradley said, like your iPad um, for like 
I mean, we're talking everything dies, everything yeah. shuts down, and you just got to have something pumping through the speakers just to keep the vibe going. You have that as well. So um, well, I'm know, actually going to be purchasing another hard drive here soon just to keep having more and stuff like that, just to fill up space with. You know, it's the big thing is that doing a uh, extra hard drive, and I've been doing it for quite a while. Um, I do have some music on the hard drive on each laptop and my main laptop right now is four terabytes big, all SSDs. Uh, and then the new one I got, which is next to me over here, that's one terabyte. I went down in hard drive space because I know I used external and between USB-C and USB mm -hmm. 3.2, which is the newest USB, the speeds are so fast. I don't see lag, any difference between lag between an internal and an external hard drive. Um, and that's also depends on your computer too, how old your computer is. Uh, my like new computer old. is a 2022. My older computer, my main computer is a 2021. And then I had go down to a uh, six-year-old computer. And then I have a 12-year-old computer. Wow. It has like my backup of a backup of a backup of a backup. <laughs> and that backup of a backup of a backup is what I originally started DJing with uh with pcs and i didn't use it i didn't have virtual dj on that uh, at first i had it on another computer and i still have actually next to me it's dead but i have another computer over here that i have tractor on so you know <laughs> oh, I, 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 have, <laughs> I have tractor um but the thing is that having how technology has changed so much it's really yeah. amazing and i don't know if you guys do this but this is what i do as another way of doing music is this is Micro Center. Um, you guys don't have Micro Center in your market. You can go to microcenter.com. These jump drives are like five, four or five bucks. You go on Amazon, buy a pack of them. It's like a 10 pack. It's like, you know, four or five bucks. I use these for, and this is 16 gigs. I use these for the music for each wedding. So I have a file I built here. I pull the music I pull for that, for that wedding, all the special songs into their own separate file and i keep that file it's all it has your name has your date so as the last names of each couple the date and it's in a folder for that year and i build those folders as we go along as i get music in and then i transfer it onto this this is what i bring with me to the wedding with their music on and everything on it and i always replace these every so often so that way i don't run into corruption you know, I plug it in. If I have any problems whatsoever, I don't use it. I'd much rather toss it into the recycling bin than you than chance it. But I also put it also the folder onto the external hard drive too. But this is my primary. This is what I usually pull the music off of. And again, these are 3.0. Um, I've never had a problem with lag with an MP3, uh, a WAV file, or even a music video. And I also have, uh, when I do gobos, because I do digital gobos, um, this is a 32 gig, again, micro center, little uh, flash drive, um, the 32 gigs, which I put the uh, uh, the video on for um, for a gobo. And again, 32 gigs, you can put it on a 16 gig, it doesn't even take a, a gig. Uh, but I, I use these, I have different colors, so I know one's music, one's for Gobo, and I found that works out really well because you have that you have that layer of protection, and you have that music, so that way it lessens the likelihood of something going wrong. So if, a lot of times you look at my computer on, on the table or on the uh, the the shelf there, you'll see a red hard drive plug, a little jump drive plugged in one one of the USB drives, and that's the music for that uh, for that wedding. And I always make sure it's ready to go. Now here's the other thing I know. A uh, cool thing was talking about Dropbox and you guys were talking about Time Machine. Uh, you know, the cloud services are great for um, a lot of, of the music. And Google, I, I'm an Apple guy. I know, I know, cool thing, you're an Apple guy. And I think Brentley, Brent you're an Apple yep. guy. Um, I'm not. But Google does do cloud services. So mm -hmm. I do have stuff in the cloud if I need to go up there and grab it and pull it down, especially for an extra layer of protection 
because you're somewhere, you can at least use your phone for a hotspot to download it. You can do something to do it. Even if it takes me a little bit of time, I much rather have a third option or a fourth option to do that as well. Um, and See, then, right? with what you're doing, like with that, it would be great, but because Record Box has lighting mode and that handles my entire light show, everything has to get analyzed before everything will work correctly. So a flash drive is great, like if you're in a pinch or some of the clubs I'm at, all I, I can bring my computer or I can bring a flash drive and just plug in. So like when I go up to Icon and Stevens Point on Friday night, I'm just bringing my laptop, no deck, and I'll have an extra flash drive just in case I had the same issue I had last time where because it's, one, it's like one of the newer Pioneer decks and my older computer couldn't handle it, I would get laggy and glitchy. So I had a flash drive just so when it, I got glitchy and it's kind of froze on me, I could just click over and go to the next track and then reboot my computer, no quick mixing or anything like that, but I was able to recover. And so for re but for record box, we can't do that. It has our entire light show. Well, for me anyway, because I'm using it, coordinated to every song. So if I plug in a flash drive, it won't analyze my, and it will literally go to interlude mode where it's just every light going off in a row. Well, you know, you're not, that's not horrible. It's not the worst thing. You know, <laughs> off, you know, just looks like you're a noob at it. You know, it's like, oh yeah, hey, my first, my first wedding, folks. You know, but here, here's the thing to think about. Um, this is one of the things I do here because uh, I do virtual DJ. Uh, I bring I virtual DJ on this computer I'm using right now on the show, um, and I just well also DJ with here on Twitch when I DJ Twitch and I do uh, music videos on Twitch. Um, I virtual DJ, I open it up, I read the whole entire hard drive, a uh, whole entire thumb drive. And I also go into, uh, the external hard drives and make sure all the songs are virtual, virtual DJ goes through and looks at all the songs and, you know, gets a BPM, gets, you know, keys and so forth and so on. If that's something you can do, if you have the other computer that you can do that, and I, again, I do it constantly so it's one of the things that okay hey you know what this this thursday i haven't done it for a couple weeks uh i'm gonna go through and, and turn virtual dj on make it take a day or so and go through 30 terabytes uh you know 30 uh gigabytes of music of mp3s to make sure everything is done and i rescan the whole entire um drive and it, it's one of the things that uh, I try to very heavily make sure it's there, but because I have virtual DG on here, it helps out because it's already pre-done. So when I walk in with this thumb drive, I put it in my computer for virtual with virtual DJ to DJ that wedding. It's already read and virtual DJ knows everything on this thumb drive. So it, it, it's one of the things that you might, I, again, I don't know what your setup and stuff like that. If your computer you're at right now, has you know a red uh, record box in it, on it, and can do that, but that might be another thing. It's one of the things I do. Um, what about you, Braylon? What, what do you do? What do you, first off, are you talking about for like for the music portion or for yeah, the, for the music portion, for going when you go to the wedding to kind of you know make sure everything is ready to go? Do you? Oh uh, yeah. I mean, so what I do, I mean, to make sure everything's ready to go. Um, I mean, for me, I so I know you you were just talking about how you will go through and have everything like be analyzed beforehand. I do that as well, but I don't like make it like a um. How about this? I don't make it like a big set thing where I have like a whole huge playlist that I have to analyze. Um, because like I talked about last week, you have a lot of the stuff already pre-analyzed because you have your preset crates and all that, right? Um, of course, for the music that maybe I didn't have beforehand, possibly for like the reception music, you know, your formalities. I will make sure to run those through to make sure my system has enough time to analyze and stuff like that. Um, but my lighting is completely separate from my music. So I know, Bradley, you use the record box um, bridge kind of deal that you have. Um, I know there's sound switch out there that also analyzes the music and does stuff like that. Um, everything I have is completely separate. So I guess I don't need the files to be analyzed for lighting purposes, but... I mean, yeah, usually the anal like the analyzation portion is not like a huge, like a big chunk of music at one time that I have to analyze every single wedding, if that makes sense. Well, 
I, I I do it all the time so that way everything is there. Right. And this way I'm always caught up. So if someone asks for something, I know two things. I know that virtual DJ is going to find it. You, you type in the search bar, they're going to find it. And then the other part is that the computer knows it's there too. Mm -hmm. So that way Windows knows you search, you can search for it. So again, that, that scan that goes through every single one, it tells Windows, yeah, the song's here in your hard drive. And, but also tells your software, your DJ software. And you use you use Serato, right? You're a Serato DJ? I do, yeah. I, I use Serato. I started off with Virtual DJ, mm -hmm. and then I switched to Serato um, years ago. Um, I still feel comfortable with Virtual DJ. Um, okay, I'll say somewhat comfortable, because Virtual DJ, there's a few little things that you need to like make minor tweaks in if you're oh, using yeah. like, the pro version, um, I, I realized. I, but yeah, um, but yeah, yeah I, I, like, I, I, I do I, like Virtual I, DJ. I, I do. don't think they're, I don't think so. Yeah, perfect software because they all have the little oh, no. works. <laughs> no, and the the whole battle of I'll, I'll just say the big battle of Serato versus Virtual DJ. I just laugh. I think it's so funny. Um, some people are so diehard about it, and it just makes me laugh so hard. And for and, me, oh, and, like, um, I did yeah. both, but I chose Serato. Serato yeah, but... speaking of Serato, the Mixstream Pro is now officially supported by Serato. That was good. Yes, that's the one with the um. Has a little speakers on it. Has a little screen. That, yeah, on it. yeah. You can yeah. Do, you, you can do it standard away from a laptop. It's kind of like the the XZ, the XZ I have. I could also just sure. kind of like what uh, uh, what Brantley uh, Brantley could do is go into grab a thumb drive, plug it in there. It has actually two USB ports for two thumb drives yeah. on that unit, one for each yeah. deck. Yeah, and you could actually run it like CDJs. That's um, uh. Jay Brandon, uh, the rep for Pioneer, he's also on the uh, Dish Jockey News. Uh, I talked to him quite a bit, and he said that that's basically what it's designed to be. The XZ is designed to copy um, the two CDJ jack decks and a 900 Nexus mixer. And having CDJs, I still have my 900 CDJs and my 900 Nexus mixer, the first generation. Um, it yeah, it is it is the same layout pretty much a little bit different because again newer generation versus my cdjs or and my 900 nexus mixer i want to say it's 10 years old 11 years old uh so it, it's it's there there it's an older older set they still work i you know uh I, I love those things it's always fun pulling them out and working on them um but the thing is that it's the xz does feel a lot like those cdjs and it, 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 it's just one of the things that, again, I know a lot of people use different software. And then I, I, I want people to understand there's not one software that's better than the other. Well, well, I'm sorry, Matt, Matt would feel his software is the best because he has everything mapped out. It's He has one of the older software that's not made anymore. I think it's by Torque, if I remember correctly. He loves his software. And that's the thing. Everyone likes different things. He likes an older software that's not being made anymore. I know people who like, you know, that still love Tractor. And, you know, we have, you know, we have one DJ here, DJ Cool Thing. He runs all three softwares. You know, he runs most more, I think more Serato, right? Yeah. Right, right um, Hunter? Yeah, for the SR2 and the Mixstream Pro. What's your, I, also have, uh, I, also have, I also have Rekordbox for the DDJ 400. And I also have Virtual DJ as like a spare of the moment thing. Just what's your main have. reason for using multiple different ones i'm just curious you're the first well, one i've heard that, that like, uses I, I, it because i have multiple controllers my main controller the dj sr2 my spare slash backup controller the dj 400 and of course my outdoor gig controller the mixing pro so I, it's I, all based I, on compatibility is what you're saying yeah, then. It's based on compatibility. Okay. i think also that's smart too because if you're if you know all three of the main softwares are out there you know, the, the mm -hmm. biggest one is virtual DJ is the biggest. Most of your mobile DJs usually do virtual DJ. Uh, no. Not, you, not, not DJ Bar, not DJ Rick Web, none of the big time DJs that use Serato. No, yeah. they use they use Serato because they're, they're more club DJ than they are for... I was about to say, hold on, DJ. buddy. You know the well, club you, standard is Serato. Serato is <laughs> I always laugh. I'm sorry. And then I, you I have, again, <laughs> Bradley's like, no, 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 no. The He's club standard. <laughs> it's the club standard. It's the club, yeah. And again, it, it's it's DJ Bar. I hate to say it, that almost every club I have to go plug and play into is Record Box. Really? Legends, Twisted Moose, and Lacrosse. 
when I go up to Icon and Stevens Point, or when I okay. go up to a night school in Wassa, the decks they have, I mean, they can be used like the, the XDJ, the new one that's yeah, you know, all in one. Yeah, you can use whatever deck on, you know, whatever app, Serato, VDJ, or Record Box. But more often than not, I'm running to places that have Record Box and gloves. I'm actually very surprised by that to hear that Record Box is. Well, um, get, not not because it's a bad software. That's not even it at all. Yeah, yeah Record Box and Serato are very remember, similar. His, yeah. His market in Wisconsin is kind of a, you know, it's a smaller market. It's a college For market. Sure. And it's a little smaller market versus if he came down here to Chicago, because he's originally from here. You know, he, yeah. he, he's my brother from another mother from here. <laughs> if he um if he went back to work to the clubs back here like he used to back when we were young kids um he would be uh, he would be he would be a, a serato dj i would have to be i would He's honestly like serato. uh but i if mean you do mobile mobile primarily this, the way the market works out this way the market is it's just yeah. the way it is mobile djs usually generally are virtual dj your club DJs truly generally are Serato. Serato. Record box straddles both sides, but it's a small amount, and it's only for Pioneer people. Like you have, you know, a Hunter here. He has yeah. both Pioneer. He has, you know, um, stuff with the engine software, which is Denon, because Denon is owned by same company owned Newmark. So Newmark, Denon, the whole entire company right there. Uh, you know, they support a lot of different things, but again, they don't have record box on those. Recordbox doesn't support a Denon or other yep. products, only supports Pioneer. If you're someone who doesn't have, like I have a Hercules controller here, which I DJ here because I don't have a lot of room on my desk. It's a $99 controller. I've done cocktail hour with it. Um, could I, I, I've done a small little micro wedding with it because it was going upstairs. I don't want to carry a big, huge uh, uh, mixer or controller. I can do this with a, the micro little uh, mixer I have. And um, work on and oh well, so true. <laughs> it's one of the things that you need to have multiple tools in your toolbox. But I give Hunter a lot of kudos for knowing all three of the main softwares, and all three of those are the mains. That right now in the market are the are the big three, and it's great that there's people out there who are purists. Say, oh, if you're if you're if you're doing if you're doing record box, you're not a real DJ. If you're doing Serato, you're not a real DJ. If you're doing virtual DJ, you're not a real DJ. Get over it. It's whatever it. you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Again, yeah. Hunter's a cool yeah. Hunter, Hunter's yeah. a perfect yeah. example. I, this. I actually use virtual DJ mainly for New Year's Eve because it's got the event schedule where I can put my countdown in there. I can be mixing and fly my I was going to say like virtual D, like if you're a Serato guy, like I am, if you're a Serato yeah, guy, yeah. there's some things that virtual DJ has you like has an up on like that little schedule planner deal. I mean, that's pretty nifty. Also, I'll say that for like, if you needed it, like in a pinch kind of deal, if you needed to go to the restroom while you're literally during cocktail hour at an event, virtual DJ has like auto mix and things like that. You can literally throw that on. Yeah. And then the two I'm, songs you need, the three songs you need back, to go to the restroom. Yeah. Go, when I come back, right? I can yeah, if I'm using Serato, I can go back to Serato or Recordbox and continue to mix. Yeah, and they we all have, have their even one of the, like their one, pros and cons. One of the chatters is saying it's good to know all the software, and yeah, it's good to know. Again, Hunter's probably very you know knee, knee deep, if not more, in all three because he's worked at all three all the time. Do I know some things in Serato? Yeah, I know some things in Serato. Uh, am I a Serato uh, connoisseur? No, but you are. Am I a Recordbox connoisseur? No, but could I work Recordbox or Serato? Sure, I can get the basics. It's knowing where stuff is at, knowing and where all, things are at, because you're so used to it in one software, it's a little different than others, but it's not a bad thing knowing more than one software. It's, it's actually a good thing. And, you know, it's 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 one of the things that having a diversity of thought is a great thing. Just like going back to what we originally talked about, the wedding shows, having the diversity of wedding shows is great too, because, again, you had the really expensive ones, and if you get a couple of smaller ones that are not as expensive and they do good for you, hey, God bless. And again, I'm always one of those persons who look at and trying a new wedding show. The wedding show I'm doing this weekend, I did last year, and it was horrible because the fact that we, we had basically almost no one there, we get, didn't get a single wedding off it, and it was more money then. He lowered the price this year, and because of COVID kind of being over and uh Last year, they had a mass mandate because we were in Cook County. This year, there's no mass mandate. There's a lot of things going against the show last year. And this year, he's got many more brides this year than last year. So, 
do I want to do something over again? Sure. And that's knowing what you're doing. I kind of look at different, uh, different levels, different things. And again, oh. just like you are Serato, but you give kudos to other brands. I think that that that's a great way, a great round look to Thank looking you. at. Just like uh, Brentley, he looks at uh, Serato, he looks at virtual DJ, says, "Hey, they do things better than than uh, Recordbox does." But Recordbox uh, does light control, which virtual DJ does not do, and I don't think Serato does. You have to have a separate software for it. Because to my knowledge, Serato does not do that. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I, so, Brentley, whenever you show that you use Recordbox like the interface for lighting, I was like. Wait, what? You don't have to use sound switch? Like what? it's it is <laughs> no I'm actually gonna I've been prepping some videos I've been working on. One is gonna go through what record box lighting. Because all my wow. friends are like, how does that work? And I'm like, it's for a what mobile DJ, it is an ultimate godsend. I literally plug the box in, plug the send the, the transmitter in, and that's it. It can and it within it, I can tell I want them to start strobing. I want all red. I want them to play faster, slower. What kind of lighting scheme every song has to it? So it has so things. You can personalize it even with it just reading music. Yeah. Once it's analyzed a song, you have like slow, um, yeah. one, one of them is called uh, natural, vivid, warm, club one, club two. Like there's different settings. And then you can tell it to go fast, slow, or awesome. medium paced. You can even control the dimness of how bright they are. And it's like I was redoing one of my computers today and putting the lights into it. And I'm like, wow, this is so easy. Like you literally just DMX number, drag and drop the fixture, and that's it. I, I know that um and I, I he was not feeling well tonight because uh what you mm -hmm. wants to come back onto the show, uh A Valley in the A Valley podcast. Oh, he wants yeah. he, he's been um I've been bugging him, say hey. You know, stop by the show. <laughs> he's one of the funny <laughs> members of the round table. And I was talking to him today, he's under the weather. Uh, and I said, Hey, you know, get some rest, but come come back on. I know he was uh at a uh he was talking about AI uh software that actually has artificial intelligence that kind of does what like Mac does with lighting. And you all know, you use plug into the software into the unit what exactly the uh, the, the fixture is. And just program the, the DMX uh, address, tell what DMX address it is, and it automatically seeks it out. It says, oh, here you go. Here's this prot item, and it automatically does all the lighting. And I, I know that's the future of lighting is the AI technology to do that. And I think that uh, Recordbox is kind of ahead of the curve because Serato is basically doing the stems. I know Virtual DJ has got STEM 2.0, which has a lot of problems. I'm still in 1.0. I don't want to upgrade to 2.0. I've used stems. I think stems are really cool. Uh, you can take out vocals, take out beats and stuff like that and do things. And I've done it a few times to take songs and make it instrumental for like yeah, it's special awesome. weddings. It's awesome. You're doing the stems. And it, it's I have stem envy. Cool. But I have envy. I, I think that having stems and having a built-in mm -hmm. light controller in the software, I think virtual DJs kind of mentioned that and Serato. That's something that again record box has that no one's has. And I've, again, this the guys who are, who are watching right now and girls who are watching who are DJs, this is one of the things that you know we talk about here all the time is you know, so you get different perspectives of different things. And make sure if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you give it a thumbs up, like this, like it, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you go to their channel, subscribe to their channels because again, they have a lot of great information, gig logs, they have a lot of great stuff out there, you know, and it's 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 one of the great things out there, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to everyone's channel, and I hope uh, DJ Fire, your grandma, feels better, uh, Serato Kyle failing, be, failing behind to Virtual DJ, yeah, it's kind of falling behind to Virtual DJ, yes and no, I, again, Serato, it's like anything, it's, it's like what kind of car you like to drive, you can say, oh, well, Ford is better than Chevy, because Ford does X, Y, Z, or Mercedes is better because it does this, or Honda is better because you can pick different things, but they all fight back and forth. And that's the thing. Once one person does one thing, they see it. And I I, don't th I think Virtual DJ does not look at really uh, Recordbox as a true competitor, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not Virtual DJ. I can't speak for them, but I'm, I just see some of the stuff that Recordbox does that Virtual DJ doesn't do. And it's like, why is Pioneer doing it? And virtual dj is not doing that you know why what is serato also is one of those things probably maybe under thinking record box a little bit maybe may wake them up a little bit hopefully i've heard rumors 
that there's something coming out for record box within the next year. I don't know what that will be. I'm hoping either a, it's a new battle deck. Cause I'm sorry, them rain wonders just, or the pioneer, uh, rev seven or whatever that is, is so sexy. But at the same time with stems coming out, there's been nothing on record boxes and released except for programming updates or the DDJ 1000. In a minute, it's been what three, four years since the one thousand. Well, you got you got remember one thing right now: supply chains are still tight. Uh, I know Nam is coming up. Uh, Nam is what April. Yeah, uh, April is. I think Nam's going to be light this year. I think it's going to be twenty twenty four. It's going to be your big return to normal Nam, and you're going to see a lot of things released then because the supply chain right now is getting better. That's why cars are more abundant on dealership lots. That's why you're starting to see things more and more and more. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, for all, all the manufacturers, for equipment-wise as well as software-wise, they start doing more and more because a lot of these products that were in 2019 that were showing, like, hey, we had this 2020 hit and nothing because one of the mark was kind of dead. And in 2021, 2022, they've been playing catch-up because of, of, of shipping problems. So, Again, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow everyone here. If you're watching us on Twitch, we're here every Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Central Time. And I thank you guys all for watching this. Uh, the Rain 4 looks very nice. Yes, it does. The, the Rain the Rain 4, that is a sexy, sexy uh, deck. But I I, I will tell you, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan for Pioneer. And I, I have older Denon stuff. I have... Denon controllers, older ones when Denon was just still Denon, not uh, merged with uh, Newmark. And Newmark makes Newmark to me has always been in the middle of the road and good quality stuff. Denon and Pioneer to me were always battling back and forth. And then Rain, they, they they're in there too. They're in there. They're at high end battle too with with uh, with Pioneer. So it, it is interesting. And hopefully, maybe maybe someday soon we'll have a rep on for someone, some manufacturer or something here. So you guys watching on Twitch, thank you so much. I appreciate make sure you guys you having me a good night Twitter there. Well. Yeah, and make sure you follow me on Twitch as well. Yeah, make sure you follow uh, make sure you follow Hunter as well as myself here on Twitch. And make sure you also follow everyone else on YouTube.